Rivers Institute was established in 2009 thanks to the generosity of Mr. Rudy North who made a very substantial gift. He is one of Canada's leading environmental philanthropists and his support of the Rivers Institute as a concept was much appreciated. One of our key objectives as an advocate for the protection and wise management of our waterways is to undertake a host of special projects. One of those is a major initiative to protect the heart of the Fraser a section of the Fraser River that runs between Hope and Mission and which is considered by many to be one of the most productive stretches of river anywhere in the world. We're also very involved in the restoration of certain waterways. One of those is Gishon Creek, a little stream that runs across the corner of BCIT. It's a stream that was severely damaged a few decades ago. It had been turned into an almost lifeless drainage ditch, but in recent years we've made a real effort to improve water quality to re-establish streamside vegetation, to improve in-stream habitat for fish, and we've been successful in re-establishing a very healthy fish population back into this creek. So we're involved in many different things, and it has been a great institute to be part of. <laughs> they did a good job. There are also many other aspects to the Rivers Institute. We're very much involved in the public awareness side of things. As an example, we coordinate World Rivers Day. We work with countries around the world. And this past September, we had more than 65 nations and literally millions of people participating in events celebrating the importance of our rivers. Also, through events like World Rivers Day, we're very active with the international community. We have undertaken a host of projects in, in many different countries. Most recently, we did some work in Ethiopia as part of an effort to assess the impact of a major dam on the Omo River. We're also very involved in applied research, and we have many different research projects underway. These might range from efforts to assess the abundance and diversity of aquatic insects in an urban stream, to efforts on the Fraser. Uh, some of our, our current projects unfolding on the Fraser include the monitoring of sturgeon uh, and trying to identify important areas from a habitat perspective. We're also very involved in assessing the importance of off-channel habitats. Then looking elsewhere, we're very involved in Britannia Creek, an area that only a decade ago was Canada's most renowned toxic hotspots, a stream that had been severely damaged by runoff from an old mine. But there's been a dramatic effort to clean that creek up and this year for the first time in 100 years we had salmon return. So we're now in the midst of a research project monitoring the recolonization of that waterway by both trout and salmon. We've had a lot of success in the first few years of the Rivers Institute. Now we're looking at that next stage and certainly a major hope at this point in time is to engage even more programs, even more students in working towards the better care of our waterways. And ultimately my hope is that the Rivers Institute will have an influence not only on the efforts to better protect rivers and streams here in British Columbia, here in Canada, but elsewhere in the world.